Hi friends, it's Joan at Ten Pentacles Tarot, and I've got another two for you book review today. I had mentioned uh, this book, Mysterious Kentucky, in one of my other videos, and some people expressed an interest in seeing a book review. And so I've got two books by Barton M. Nunnally, and they are both about Kentucky. I'm uh, filming this in Kentucky. I live in Kentucky, and um, in the United States, of course. And um, so I just wanted to share these books with you because they're super interesting. And this first one, Mysterious Kentucky, The History, Mystery, and Unexplained of the Bluegrass State. And this one is published by, and I got these at Barnes & Noble, by the way. So um, they're, um, it's by Triangulum Publishing, and I'll put this in the description box too, because uh, that's an unusual publisher. Copyright 2007, third edition 2021. And I just saw one of these again. Now, I got this several years ago, but I just saw this in the Barnes & Noble the other day, and I think it was this Bigfoot in Kentucky one. But, I mean, these books are still available. All right, so um, I just want to go over it. It says... Uh, in Mysterious Kentucky, the reader will discover how Kentucky ranks as one of the strangest states in America and lays claim to an astounding number of bizarre events and is haunted by a plethora of unexplained phenomena that is sure to send shivers down the spines of even the most hardened anomaly buffs. Does Bigfoot really prowl the lonely bottomlands and virgin forests of the region? According to thousands of Kentuckians, he does. And he does not walk here alone. In addition to this man-beast, readers will also discover the beast of um, LBL, which is land between the lakes, um, the Spotsville monster, and a pack of terrifying werewolves, water creatures that lurk beneath Kentucky lakes and rivers, and more. You will also explore the state's mysterious past, complete with vanished races, diminutive beings, and impossibly ancient cultures and the anomalous artifacts they left behind. Find out what secrets the ancient Native American burial mounds and immense cave systems conceal, like giant human skeletal remains, petrified mummies, and more. With mysteries in the sky, on land, and in the water, Mysterious Kentucky has it all and is sure to satisfy anyone with a taste for the unknown. Discover why Kentucky was called the Dark and Bloody Ground, if you dare. And it says, what do UFOs, Bigfoot, pterosaurs, leprechauns, lizard men, water monsters, and werewolves all have in common? They have all been encountered in the bluegrass state. So... When I got this book, I thought, oh, cool, you know, and I kind of giggled about it because, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, it does maybe not seem like it, but I'm pretty skeptical. I don't just believe anything, but I do enjoy reading it and I do enjoy, you know, thinking about it and, and thinking is, you know, could this be true? All right. So, and I'm not, and I don't say, you know, that's definitely not true because at my age, I'm learning there's many, many, many things that I don't know about. And there are a lot, and uh, my favorite quote is um, Hamlet, when he, by Shakespeare, of course, William Shakespeare, when he says, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. And, you know, I feel like that's about true for us all. All right, so um, starts out with section one, Kentucky's Mysterious Past. Um, section 2, Kentucky's Mysterious Waters. Section 3, Kentucky's Unfriendly Skies. Section 4, Kentucky's Mysterious Dimin Diminutives. Dimin diminutives. Diminutives. Lord, that's a tongue twister for me. Um, section 5, Kentucky Beastmen. Section 6, Mysterious Kentucky Cryptids. And then Section 7, Edgar Casey, who was a very famous psychic who uh, was born and raised in Kentucky. All right, so I mark, I dog-eared some pages. I wish, I hope you don't do that to your books, but I needed to mark it, and I didn't have my um, my little posties handy. So I've got. I'm just going to read you a few things here. Um, and this was him talking about uh, when he lived in Henderson County, and Henderson County is supposed to be the most um, the site. They're the area in Kentucky that has the most strange things happening. And that's west of me. I don't, I may have driven through Henderson County at one time or another, but I, you know, have not spent any amount of time there. But you know what? 
Maybe I will because it sounds pretty cool. All right, so it says, um, Large, hairy, wild men certainly are no strangers to my home country. Indeed, or home county, sorry, because he is from Henderson County. It says, Indeed, it appears they have made for themselves a permanent home here. I've personally spoken to witnesses of Henderson County monster activity from as far back as 1935, but I'm sure they stretch much, much further back in time, though poorly reported or documented nor are they strangers to me. Again, this is mainly due to the bottomland locations where I lived. Uh, watershed areas, I've come to understand, are like Bigfoot roadways, which they use mainly under cover of darkness. In 1971, when I was five years old, my family lived in Reed, Kentucky, which is also in Henderson County, at a place we called the Booth's Farm on Collins Road. One night, as we all sat watching TV, my older sister glanced out the kitchen window and saw a monster looking back at her. She screamed, very loudly. My father, shotgun in hand, rushed out with my mother behind him and fired two shots at a tall brown figure as it was running down a dirt road which led to the back fields. When dad asked my sister what it looked like, she said Frankenstein, but it was known thereafter as the brown man. This location, as it turns out, is a very active one regarding monster activity with sightings dating back to the 1960s and continuing on to the present. In 1968, another, or possibly the same creature, was seen there by the previous family by the name of Driscoll, and giant five-toed footprints were found. We were forced to move after my mother saw a red-colored UFO land out behind one of the barns late one evening. All right, so, and these are like a lot of personal stories, and they're also stories, um, reports from people who also saw things. I'm going to try to find one of the reports so uh, you can see how it's done. And it, it talks about um, atypical um, Kentucky Bigfoot reports. And then they talk the subject of the sighting, um, the date, time, and location, approximate distance between witness and subject, describe in detail the animal witnessed, approximate height and weight of the animal. Did you notice any strange smell? So he asks them um, all of these questions about what they saw. And then there's several, um, well, many accounts uh, from different people who have seen things. All right, so let's see. Um, I'm trying to see what I... Okay, so one day a man, um, he's saying this is a Bigfoot, and one day he was walking along an old fence line next to a field and noticed a strange area that looked like heat waves rising from a hot summer road. The area was only a few yards wide, and to either side, everything looked normal. So that, like, to me, that says, screams, portal. Okay. According to Roy, as he was watching one of the creatures, watching one of the creatures stepped out of this strange wavy area like stepping out of a doorway. One second, nothing, and the next there was looking right at him. It growled at him, and at the same time, screamed inside his head, leave me alone. Then it turned around and took a step back into the strange-looking doorway and disappeared. Um, after that, he began watching the same area from a distance using binoculars as often as he could. In all, he claimed to have witnessed several different monsters using this doorway a total of three different times, always appearing or disappearing seemingly into thin air. These strange creatures would then be seen crossing his own property and tripping the sensitive motion-detecting security lights in his yard. His last sighting was in August of 2004. When asked if I could see the trace evidence, I received another revelation. All right, and it goes on. So, um, this reminds me a lot of the stuff that happens on Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. If you're not familiar with Skinwalker Ranch, um, I have a really good book. It's called, um, it's called The Hunt for the Skinwalker, and I have lent it to someone, so I don't have it here, but I'll try to think about if I get it back or when I get it back, I'll put a, uh, I'll do a review of that one because it's excellent. Okay, so then he has some drawings. This is the Sturgis Vampire, which is apparently one of the characters or one of the creatures that's been seen in Kentucky. This one is a Kentucky Lizard Man. And um, this the author does all these drawings from witness descriptions. So it's really interesting. Um, if you're interested in this type of content, I think you will really, really like this book. I think it's good. And I just saw something that I wanted to share with you. I mean, there's everything from aliens to giant snakes to um, 
prehistoric looking birds. Um, there's little, there's a situation with little green men that actually got pretty big news coverage. It happened on August 21st, 1955 in Western Kentucky. Um, it says it was an event which was destined to become one of the most highly investigated, thoroughly documented, and well-reputed cases in UFO history. Long before such encounters came to be called close encounters of the third kind, there was the incident at Kelly, Kentucky, hardly more than a wide spot in the side of the road in Christian County, seven miles north of Hopkinsville. So he tells specifically where these um, things take place. Apparently this family was... Um, um, besieged by these little, actually little green men. And um, it says they were about three and a half feet tall with large yellow glowing eyes and huge pointed crinkly ears. Um, it had glow in the dark skin that looked like silver or shining metal as it stood there beneath the glow of the outside light less than 20 feet away. They noted that, it, these are the people telling the um, story, they noted that it possessed neither a nose nor hair, a straight slit of a mouth which ran from ear to ear, and when it got a little closer, they were horrified to see that its hands ended in cruel-looking claws like talons. There was but one option, really. They opened fire, and this is the family in Kentucky in the country. Can you imagine? Um, okay, a hail of twenty-two caliber and 12-gauge bullets slammed into the little man from close range, and strangely, the thing merely flipped over backwards and ran off, apparently unhurt, into the darkened woods. Completely daunted by such an unexpected reaction to lethal force, the two men hurried back inside to try and calm the women and children who were already past upset before the gunfire started. Their efforts were disrupted when the creature or another like it returned and was seen peering in one of the side windows. The men fired at once right through the window, and in a shower of glass, the little creature was seen to again flip over backwards and run away into the darkness. By now, the women and children were crying and screaming hysterically, and the unexpected nightmare was spinning out of control. Lucky and Taylor, who were two of the men, decided to go back outside to see if they could locate the body of one of the things they had shot. No one wanted to be left alone, of course, so Taylor, followed closely by Lucky and the rest of the Sutton family, slowly made his way through the house and stepped cautiously out onto the back porch. They could see nothing, and all was quiet as they inched forward, guns at the ready. Taylor was about to step off the porch and into the backyard when from behind him, Lucky and the rest saw a claw-like hand reach down from the tin roof overhead and grab a handful of the man's hair. He was then pulled back into the house by hysterical family members while Lucky continued down into the yard, turned and opened fire on the little monster that was perched on the roof. The blast struck it squarely, but according to Sutton, the thing didn't fall normally to the ground, but seemed to float down almost casually. To his horror, Lucky noticed another creature sitting on the limb of a nearby tree and realized that there were more than one of them. Inside, Glennie was tucking the children under the bed, and Taylor, having composed himself somewhat, raced back outside to help Lucky shoot at the creature in the tree. When hit, this one too floated safely to the ground and ran away, only to be re replaced by a third entity which ran out from the corner of the house and into the line of fire. In all, the family claimed to have been attacked by six, attacked six separate, separate times during the three-hour period of time. And these poor people after this actually uh, moved out of that house, which... I can't say I blamed them. So anyway, this is uh, Mysterious Kentucky. The stories are great. Even if you don't believe it, it's super, super interesting. And I recommend it. The second book by the same man is um, focuses on Bigfoot. And it's um, Bigfoot in Kentucky, again, by Barton M. Nunnally. This one is also published by... Uh, let me see. I think it's the same publisher. Yes, it's also published by Triangulum Publishing, and this one um, was in 2011 and 2017 also. Um, all right, so this one focuses on Bigfoot. Uh, it says, um, Cryptid researcher and investigator Barton M. Nunnally, a self-taught writer and artist, was born and raised in Henderson, Kentucky, where he has spent decades searching the bottomlands of the Bluegrass State for evidence of its diverse natural mysteries. His wanderings have brought, have brought him face-to-face -face with such creatures as Bigfoot, water monsters, black panthers, out-of-place wolves, and other mysterious cryptids, including a thunderbird in 1998, something no other living researcher can presently claim. He co-founded, oh, you might be interested in this, he co 
co-founded KentuckyBigfoot.com, a website devoted to the collection of Bigfoot and other unknown animal sightings in Kentucky in 2005. He um, co-founded it. And his cryptid art has appeared in numerous publications, including magazines and children's books. He's appeared on documentary films and on several cable television networks, including the History Channel, the Travel Channel, and the BBC. He spends his time writing books, feature films, and walking the ancient creek beds in and around Henderson County with his wife. All right, so, and again, this book focuses on Bigfoot in Kentucky. And I did mark a page, so there must be something super interesting here. Oh, this, oh, this is my county. Okay, this goes county by county um, in each each Kentucky county. And it um, tells everything that's been, that has happened in that particular county. So here we go, like Lloyd County, Franklin County, Grant County, and we get to Henry County, which is my county. And it says, like so many other Kentucky counties, Henry County also has a history of hairy monster sightings going back several decades or longer and continuing on until recent times. Two children allegedly saw a Bigfoot there back in the fall of 1978 near the family home on Joe's Branch Road between Lockport and Bethlehem. Okay, that's not near where I live. It was just after sunset. A bright moon lit the clear night sky. While they were eating supper, the family was disturbed by the sound of their horses raising a commotion down in the barn. Our house was built into the hillside, one of the children later stated. The front yard dropped off 200 feet to the road below and then dropped again to a small creek. The horse barn and chicken coop were situated just across this creek. A three-foot-high hitching post was attached to the barn. As we were eating supper, we could hear the horses down at the barn making a lot of noise, kicking the barn and nickering. My parents sent us down to see what was the matter. The two siblings followed the trail that led down to the road until they came to a point where they could see the barn. I'll never forget what we saw, one of them said. A very tall, hairy creature was standing by the hitching post to the right of the barn. The hitching post only came to its knees. My brother took off up the hill to the house, but I stood there and watched it as it walked off. Other than it being very tall in here suit... The witness could not make out any further details about its appearance, but said that it walked away with long, graceful strides. Many years before the incident took place, large rocks, which seemed to come out of nowhere, were allegedly thrown at her grandfather, who could never explain the occurrence. The family also heard strange screaming sounds coming from two separate locations outside one night. The sounds made by the family's two pet dogs... The sounds made the family's two pet dogs cower beneath the bed. The screaming sounds, which the family felt were two of the creatures calling to each other from a distance, went on for about 15 minutes. Whatever it was, the witness said they met, and all we heard then was silence. Okay, um, and then it talks some more. So this is real, in really interesting. Um, and like I said, it's broken down into counties. Um, in Kentucky. And I keep seeing this interesting looking picture that I want to show you right, right here. Oh, okay. So that is a skull of something. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, that's it. So there are some interesting pictures in here. Some of them are drawings again by the author and some of them are, um, but it's kind of cool because, for example, in Laurel County, it shows where the county is located in Kentucky. So you can kind of, um, let me look up Henderson, just because we were talking about Henderson, and I can tell you. Um, I can show you kind of where it is. Hopkins, Henry. Okay, Henderson, you should be here. And that's probably why this is such a long chapter, because it's all... Henderson County, which again is where the... And these people who are witnesses signed affidavits. Um, it says their names, but sometimes it just says name on record. So it's not... Okay, the Spotsville Monster. I'm still trying to... Geneva Giant. The Flat... Um, ah, Henderson County. Sure enough. Okay, so here is Kentucky. And here's where Henderson County is located. Right, right there. In, in the black, okay. So it's kind of the western, northwestern uh, border of of uh, Kentucky. I was thinking just a minute, Jefferson County. I'm curious because I J K L. Let me see something here. Lee County, Jefferson County is of course um, Louisville, 
which is where the, okay, and Jefferson County is, okay, so Jefferson County is quite up a bit from it. All right. So anyway, friends, these are the two books I wanted to review for you today. Mysterious Kentucky and Bigfoot in Kentucky, both by Barton M. Nunnally, both published by Triangulum Publishing. And um, if you enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not done so completely free for you. It helps me out a lot. Um, if you want to support the channel in another way, I have got a, um, a group, a channel group that you pay $3.99 a month for and you get special videos, you get special monthly giveaways and things like that. So um, if you're interested, there is a link in the description box where you can check it out. Um, right now on there, I've got a series on um, my experiences with the Fae which I, you may find interesting because um, I'm finding it kind of mind-blowing myself. So that is um, about channel memberships. If you don't want to join anything, and um, that is so perfectly fine, you do whatever you feel right doing. I just appreciate you watching. I love it when you comment. I um, love it when you like the videos with a thumbs up. That helps me too. And I want you to know that I appreciate you being with me today. In fact, I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever it is where you are. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.